best real estate market you're ever going to see. And so if you can buy and hold for a few years, you're going to, you're going to do very well. Um, state budget update. So this, I've set the ground economically. Um, this is the rainy day fund, by the way, um, in our office. Oh my gosh. This is, yeah. <laughs> um, this is something new at the treasurer's office. One of the things we've been doing is, uh, I, you know, I, I was at the legislature during the last recession, uh, 2001, 2002, 2003. And it was really frustrating that we were not told that it was a problem until after we passed the budget. And we were, you know, if we'd known sooner, we would have made different choices and been able to prevent the, the, the problem from becoming as bad. So when I got in the treasurer's office, I said, we've got a lot of information here. Let's figure out a way to uh, um, do better on predicting budget shortfalls. This is how I was able to know that we were uh, um, heading into budget problems back six months to a year before anybody else uh, um, was talking about this. Um, and you can see here very clearly, this is the average balance. This is basically looking at the average balance in the checkbook for the state. You'll notice that a couple months always pop out at the top. That's February and March. That's because if you think about it, what's the busiest shopping season of the year? That's, you know, of course, December. Those businesses, you pay sales tax to the business when you at the register. They have to make the payment to the estate at the end of January. So it sits in the bank account in February and March. So those are always your, your, your best months of the year. And you can see very clearly, look at this, the housing bubble and what it did. You can see where it burst. You can see the drop down. And this is where we are right now. In fact, um, when we were watching this, this was February and March. And we were looking at February and March saying, I really hope we don't look back at this and say, yeah, February and March were the best months of the year. But it's starting to look that way, even as, as the drop off. This is uh, the same information, but it's charted year over year. So this is January 08 to January 07, January 07 to January 06. What this does is it gets rid of the seasonality of state spending and the seasonality of state revenues and gives you a very good economic picture of what's going on because we collect revenues from all over the state. So this is a good aggregate of what's going on. And you'll notice, look at this. We were negative back in the 92, 93 recession. Look at this, we were negative in 01. And in fact, if you look here in uh, uh, the legislature, right there was, Aug no, excuse me. I think right there was August of 2001. Prior to 9-11, it was the first we started to get back the, the revenue estimates, and that was when we were told, you may remember this, Karen, that, wait, we've got a budget problem. We'd gone through the 01 budget, and everything was fine. Everything was great. They'd grown the budget a lot. Well, we found out in August that wasn't the case. Of course, the 9-11 happened. That was like pouring gasoline on a fire. Made things worse. But had we had this data, we would have actually have seen, we would have had eight months warning. We would have known in January that we were having budget problems and been able to address it in that original budget and get ahead of the problem as opposed to behind it. So when we got here, look at, you know, obviously we get out of the 0203 recession, things are great. Look at this, the bubble bursts in housing and look at this impact. January of 2007, negative 5.3% year over year. And it's continued to drop. January of 08, negative 21.6%. Uh, June of 08, negative 60.8%. Dean, yes. could, could I just add something? When you look at your chart and you see how well we recovered and we went up there, instead of paying off our debt and instead of, of banking some of that money, you know, mostly what we did was start new programs and fund new programs like All Day K, which cost a fortune. I mean, the foresight was not there at all, and we had indications. We have a quarterly forecast committee that comes together that everybody in the legislature is able to go and attend. Very few legislators take the time to go and attend that forecast, which is very sad because there, these forecasters from all over the state, from ASU, NAU, U of A, there's many others, come together and tell us what they project. And, you know, if you went with the conservative estimate, which is what we should do with your money, not be liberal with it and spend it if we think it's going to be there, um, this is what happened. 
And now we are in one of the most serious situations we've ever been in in this state. Per capita, we have the worst budget deficit in the nation. Uh, um, uh, California has a bigger dollar amount, but they're a bigger state. We're actually per capita the worst in the nation right now. The sad thing of it is many of the legislators had an idea about this, but they went ahead and voted to spend your dollars or commit you to spend your tax dollars. And I can, I I can actually show you how this worked. You know, what went wrong? How do we end up in this $2 billion, $2.5 billion budget shortfall? The 07 uh, spending was $9.6 billion. And revenues were 9.7. So that was the last budget that was in balance from a, a, a long-term permanent uh, spending perspective. So what happened in the next year, uh, next fiscal crisis, was the 08 spending, revenues dropped to $8.8 billion. Now, I have to say, when we were at 9.7, I was predicting that we would drop to about, we'd lose between, we'd go flat to negative 400%, 400 million in growth. So we'd lose about 400 million in revenue. I was probably the most pessimistic on the Finance Advisory Committee in saying we were gonna drop that much. I was wrong. We actually dropped 800 million in revenue. So I wasn't, I was too optimistic as it turns out. But that doesn't get, how do we get to a $1.8 billion shortfall in 08? And that was because the spending actually went to 10.6 because they were using the old forecast. Now, I don't blame legislators for not, I mean, that was a brand new statistic. I mean, we were producing it for the first time, but it was, it turned out to be a lot more accurate than what we've seen in the past. So the 08 budget, in order to fix that, because it was so late in the year before they were able to get an agreement on the 08 budget, there wasn't a lot of spending reductions that could be done because most of the money had already been spent. So the 08 budget was revised down to 10.3. That still left a structural deficit uh, um, of over, well over a billion dollars. This is where the rainy day fund went. Almost the entire rainy day fund was taken um, just to cover this, as well as some tricks and gimmicks and other things to get you from 8.8 .8 billion in revenue up to the 10.3 billion that um, they were spending for the year. So 09, you know, this is one-time money, uh, a rainy day fund, et cetera. So for 09, here we go. Revenues grow to 9 billion. So we're actually predicting revenue growth for this year, an extra 200 million in revenue. But the budget that was just passed shows five, it was based on a 5% growth rate for this year at 9.9 .9 billion. However, this number comes, that 5% growth rate was what they were forecasting. The first couple of months of revenue are now in and they haven't been performing as expected. They actually need 6.1% growth in order to balance the $9.9 .9 billion budget. The problem is, is that's not the real size of the budget. 9.9 .9 is only what you show on your balance sheet. Authorized in the budget is actually $11.65 billion in spending. Uh, and you have to look at what the actual spending that was done uh, in here. You've got accounting gimmicks. You've got about a half a billion dollars worth of debt for school construction. You've got uh, university, uh, um, the debt associated with that. Uh, you've got uh, um, the career ladders program, which is a quarter of a billion dollar program under full implementation. You've got uh, um, basically the rollover. And this is going to become a real issue. We've got three school payments we have to make July 1 of 2000. Uh, uh, nine, the beginning of next fiscal year, we will have to make almost about three quarters of a billion dollars worth of school payments with only a, uh, a couple days worth of revenue. So it's going to be, it's just really going to start hitting a bind going forward because essentially what you've done to get through this situation to balance that out is you've, they've maxed out the credit cards. They've pretty much borrowed almost all that you can borrow. The rainy day fund's going to be gone at this point. And so what, what that means is 2010 and 2011's budget are going to be uh, um, the worst ones because the easy fixes are gone. Now you've got you to really address the structural deficit in <coughs> dropping spending or increasing revenues, wh which would be tax increases. Um, yes, that, that's exactly what, it, because the bond folks are looking at these same numbers. And as long as we had a rainy day fund, as long as the structural Sorry. deficit was reasonable, uh, um, they were okay with that. They know we have slowdowns or whatever. But because of where we were with the growth, I mean, this budget had 500 new FTEs, 500 new employees being uh, authorized. Um, you know, that, you know, puts you in a position where 
the bond folks just don't like that. Now, this 